Okay. So the next, this next um, section will be about solving quadratic equations by completing the square. So complete the square. Um, that's how we're going to start um, this uh, um, topic. It's going to be a short one, but this is very important to show where the quadratic formula comes from. For me, that's the main purpose of the complete the square um, topic. So let's go ahead and, and show you the steps that you take when it comes to solving a quadratic equation by complete the square. So when um, solving quadratic equation by complete the square, just like any quadratic equation, you must think about putting your equation in standard form. AX squared plus BX plus C equals zero. Now, by complete the square, step one will be making sure that you isolate the, the constant. You want to move it over. You keep only the x terms on once on the side of the variables. So one variable side and one constant side. You add or subtract the constant on both sides. And then you have to make sure that because... Um, Obviously, A is not zero because we're solving a quadratic equation. Um, now, you want to check to see if A is one or not one. If A is not one, um, you may want to divide every term by A because you want to clear the X squared term to make a coefficient one. So you divide by this coefficient. And then next, you may want to, uh, you may want to uh, add you may want to add b over 2a squared on both sides. So the b over 2a is, you know, after you divide, and then you would get this situation. But let me show you what happens when you add c on both, or subtract the constant on both sides, and then um, divide by a what your equation turns to. So that's your equation that is a, the equation is a x squared plus b x plus c equals zero. Remember step one, you move the c over. In this case, you subtract it on both sides. So you have a x squared plus b x equals negative c. And then you divide each term by a because you wanna you want the coefficient of x squared to be one and a is not equal to zero then you can divide by this value and then so that's x squared plus b over a x equals negative c over a now what I want to show you is um, this This is two terms of a perfect, perfect square trinomial. That's the two first term of a perfect tr square trinomial. So if you have a perfect square trinomial, I'm just going to give an example before we move forward to clarify everything in your head. So say you have x squared plus 3 say six X, this is, and I'm telling you that this is two terms. These are two terms of a perfect square trinomial. Now to find the sec, the last term, the third term of that trinomial, you may want to take this term, the coefficient of X divided by two and then square it the coefficient of x here is 6 divided by 2 and then square it to get that third term that would be 9 and that make this a perfect square trinomial 
And obviously, it will be written as x plus 3 squared. So once you have two terms, the x squared term and the linear term of a trinomial, again, if you have the square, the square term and the linear term of a trinomial, in order to make it a perfect square trinomial, you have to divide the coefficient of the linear term by two and raise it to the second power. And then that will give you a perfect square trinomial or a perfect square binomial. So a trinomial that is that ends up to be a perfect square binomial. So now, how do you get that? So if I had this, to get this one, set it as a square, you know it's a perfect square, and then it's going to be the square root of this term, that's x. This sign, if it's minus, minus, in this case, it's plus. And then the square root of the last term, that is 3. So it turns it to, into a perfect square. That's if you had the two terms and then you find the third term that is coefficient of the linear term divided by two raised to the second power. So that said, this explains why we need to raise both sides of this. You need to add this coefficient divided by two and square it to the second to, to both sides. So this coefficient is b over a divided by two would mean multiply by one half. Multiplying by one half, so that's two a, and then square it. And then you would add it on both sides of the equation. So that is x squared plus b over a square uh, x plus this you add it on both sides this is what we previously had right And then since we add it on both sides, negative C over two over A here, and then same thing here that we add on both sides. That, right? Well, obviously this is X squared plus B over A X plus b squared over 4a squared equals, um, if we want to make this as a common denominator here, common denominator, well, obviously that's uh, b squared over 4a squared, right? b squared over 4a squared. What's this? But I do want it to be in, in um, on the everything with the common denominator that is, uh, that's going to be 4a squared, right? But for this one, we need to multiply by 4a. So that's negative 4ac. If I multiply c by 4ac, then we, we would have, and then plus b squared. Okay. And this, we know that is, it's what? The square root of this one is x, the sine plus, and then the square root of this would be b over 2a, right?
So that's x plus b over 2a, right? And then that equals, uh, if I want to put that as b squared minus 4ac over 4a squared, right? And then now we can solve using the square root property, correct? We can solve using the square root property. If we have a squared equals b, then, then a equals plus minus the square root of b. Remember that? We talked about it when we were solving uh, by the radical, the, the square root property. Then we can apply this here. If we choose to apply this here, what's gonna happen? Let me just create some more space here. Just creating some space and keep the format that we had. Um, so we have this. And then the square root would be square root of this. This side will be x plus b over 2a. And then that equals to plus or minus square root of the top. That's square root of b squared minus 4ac. Remember, square root of a, a over b. a over b, square root is square root of a over square root of b. Right? That's why I take the square root of the b squared minus 4ac first, and then I'll take the square root of square root of 4a squared is, um, is uh, 2a right, over 2a. And then now x would be what? Let me put these comments over here, turn them in blue to avoid any um, confusion. All the comments are in blue right here. And then, um, so we can, Subtract b over 2a on both sides. And then x is becoming, since we're going to have negative b over 2a plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And then that leads to x equals, and which is the quadratic formula, common denominator. Then we can just write them as 2a in denominator. And then negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, which is the quadratic formula. Quadratic. So this is our quadratic formula that we, we know of. So basically, that's how you create your quadratic formula. Um, so the comments, I'm going to remove them so we can actually do the example that we are working with. I remove the comments. Well, you can just um, pause the video if you want to keep the comments uh, and then write them down. But I do want to... Make sure that I move on with the, the actual example that we were solving. Oops, that is all messed up on this one. Okay, so here. Let me just shrink this a little bit to just create more space so we can solve our actual example here.
Okay. So then now we can go ahead and solve our example, which is what? The example that we, we are solving here is um, 7x, 7x squared minus 28x equals 315. Now, as you can see, step one is already done for us where we can, we, we should isolate the C. It's already on the other side, which is perfectly fine because we were going to do it anyway. So 7x squared, let me use uh, another color for the example here. So 7x squared minus 28x equals 315. That's the example. We divide, step two, we divide by a, seven. So we get x squared equals, um, not equals, minus four x equals seven, three, 15 divided by seven is 45. Okay, now we're gonna add on both sides four over two squared. So on both sides, we got x squared minus four x, four over two squared is four. You'd all agree with that, right? Because it's two over two squared, four over two is, is two, we square it, that's four again. So we add four on both sides. which is our uh, four over two squared. And then and then now we can move on with the, the with the equation. What's the perfect square for this one? What's the perfect square for this one? Square root of this is x, the minus sign. And then square root of four is two. See how we get, and then we square it, obviously. And then we square it. Over here, we got 45 plus four, that's 49. Now we can use the perfect square, the square root formula, square root property, I meant. So square root of both sides x minus two squared equals plus minus square root of 49, right? And then x plus minus, x minus two equals uh, seven plus minus seven. And then we have two solutions, x, if we add two on both sides, If we add two on both sides, so we got x equals two plus seven and x equals two minus seven. So that equals nine and this is negative five. So your solution set will be nine and negative five. So you go up here to give the answer. So that's uh, nine and negative five. And you can write your solution set as nine comma negative five. So that's the first example as you're solving an equation using complete the square. Step one, move C to, the, to, the, to one side by itself. Um, add or divide by, divide by the coefficient of X squared if it's not one. You divide by it, and then you clear your you 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 make sure you simplify fractions if needed, and you you add coefficient of x squared after you do those two steps. You add the coefficient of x squared, the coefficient of x squared on a coefficient of of x. You add the coefficient of x, and then square it coefficient of x divided by two squared. You add coefficient of x divided by two squared on both sides. 
coefficient of x after you divide you you add c on both sides divide by a add take the coefficient of of the x divided by 2 square it and add it on both sides of the equation the side with the x will be automatically a square a binomial square how do you find it your square root of the x is x plus or minus if it's plus you put the plus if it's a minus you put the minus that is in front of the x coefficient and then you add the uh the constant square root what you added that gives you the perfect square on one side and then you take the square root of the other side and then solve for x let's do another example all right here is an example here this one i broke it down so you can see what i was talking about i know there was little uh, uh, um, miss words that I was doing earlier. Now I'm going to clear everything up by this example. Give me your attention. Now, what do we have? First, is step one is already done for us? Is step one already done for us? Your answer should be yes, because the constant is by itself here, and then y and y squared on one side. So that is done. Now what's next? Next, we're going to check to see if a means the coefficient of the square term is not one. In front of y squared, I see nothing. That means it's one. That means I, I don't have to divide by a. Now, our next step that would be dividing by a, we don't need it. It's already perfectly fine for us. We already have coefficient of x squared is one or y squared is one. Now, the third step is to take the coefficient of the linear term, which is this. So 14, we divide it by 2, and then you raise it to the second power. It becomes what you need to add on both sides of the equation. So this is going to be 7 squared, which is 49. So there was a question here. They say determine the constant that should be added on both sides of the equation that the left side becomes to make the left side become a, a perfect square. A perfect square. So that is that number. So you take coefficient of the linear term divided by two and square it, then you get 49. So that's the answer for this question. And then next, next they asked me to solve the equation so I can find the values of y. Well, I'm gonna bring it here, do what we, we, we have at this point, which is the y squared minus 14y equals 10 now i'm gonna add i'm gonna add that one that constant plus 49 on both sides okay and then now that takes me to the next level where i can write this side as a perfect square binomial the square root of this is y the sign is negative, and the square root of 49 is 7. So that said, I have, that said, I have this that becomes 59. And then we can use the square root property a squared equals B. If A squared equals B, then A equals plus minus square root of B. So Y minus 7 equals plus minus square root of 59. Square root of 59 is not, uh, 59 is not a perfect square. I not, I'm not sure we will have any perfect square factor from 59. So that means we're just going to need to uh, add 7 on both sides. Then you get y equals plus minus 7, uh, seven 
7 plus minus 59 square root. And then that takes me to the answer for y. And then your solution set is 7 plus minus square root of 59. So your solution set is that. And you can go ahead and write your answers in either as giving your y values or just write it as the values, um, the solution set, plus or minus square root of 59. And that's it for the next, the, the topic 2.4b, two, 2 which is solving quadratic equation by complete the square.